If y'all will turn with me to the book of John, the book of John chapter 3. I'm going to come from a verse that is very, very familiar. And I feel like a lot of the times we learn certain verses and then they kind of become like a mantra, so to say to us. Very like familiar and we kind of just spat them off and, and, and maybe not keep the depth and the understanding of what the verse actually means and what the truth of it actually means. Um, the word that the Lord gave me is God so loved he gave. Amen. God so loved Thank he gave. And God doesn't just give one time. His work on the cross continues to give to us today. Yes. And will continue to give to us continuously till the day of his coming. Either he comes back and raptures us up or we pass away. Whichever one comes first, the work of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross will continually give to you every single day of your life. And you know what? I, the job of the enemy is to distract us, right, Pam? Is to get us to believe that what Jesus did, we cannot access. Or what Jesus did isn't continuously giving to us today. And um, I think the Lord gave me a good nugget and a good truth for us today. That when we get finished, we're going to know what we have in Jesus. And some of this might be a little bit of a reminder to us, but Pastor Matt, Paul said, don't find it tedious for us to remind. Right. And I'll tell you what, I don't know about you, but I need to be reminded. Amen. I need to be reminded. Please remind me, oh Lord, yes. of your truth, because I don't know about you, but a mom of, a mom of five and a business owner and in ministry, I get a little distracted. Come on. Things come up. Right, right. And all of a sudden, maybe my back is up against the wall. And I go, oh, I got to remember God's truth. <laughs> I got to remember what I have in him. Oh, Holy Spirit, remind me, oh God. Amen. God so loved, he what? He Amen. gave. You know what? I don't know about you, but when I gave my heart to the Lord, I felt like Jesus was taken a lot. Mm. Y'all ever feel like that? <laughs> I can be real with y'all this morning, yes, right? Yes, okay. Yes. So then Jesus was like, I don't want you to do that. Look, when you get saved, you know, you're like, don't go there. Don't do that. Don't say that. Don't dress like that. Don't go there. Don't act like that. Don't. And here, you, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we get stuck in the don'ts. And instead of what he gave. Come on. That's so you get what I'm saying? And then it becomes miserable Christianity. Uh -oh. And we don't want to be a Christian because we're miserable because we're looking at all the things that we cannot and don't have and can't do any longer. But Jesus said these things will bring what? Death. Yeah. But he said, look at what I gave. Yes. And I'll tell you, the moment that I switch perspectives, mm -hmm. hear what I'm saying to you. The moment the Lord changed my perspective from what I don't have any longer to who he is and what he has given me was the moment it became joyful. <laughs> was the moment I was like, this is wonderful. <laughs> was the moment I could come in here and worship him even if I blew it on the way in from the parking lot. Come on, you better preach. So wait, I don't know the young lady's name that was over here yesterday that was getting it in and worship. Chastity. I love what she said. Because she said, the Pastor Matt asked her, well, what makes you worship like that? I mean, she was going hard after the Lord. And I'm all about it. So I said, she said, she said, the Lord told her to worship like I died for you. Because I did. Hallelujah. And I was like, glory. <laughs> glory. The Lord is not, he's not embarrassed. You ever look at somebody worshiping and you're like, oh my. We so stuffy in the church. Amen. Get over yourself. Amen. Come on. Yes. Come on. Yes. Come yes. on. Can, we, can we get over ourselves? We need to get over ourselves. Look, you will go to a basketball game, a football game. I have seen my husband, baby, I love you, but act a fool in front of the TV. Come on. <laughs> okay, over something. Now, who worship? 
card too, so I'll give them that. Amen. But some of us come up into the church house and we're like, that's right. Preach. God so loved he gave. His only begotten son, and some of that is the enemy keeping us in bondage, right. making us believe we can't worship him because we ain't got it all together. Come on. Oh, I have news for you. Pastor Matt ain't even got it all together. That's right. And I don't have it all together. Amen. Rob ain't got it all together. Amen. And Pastor John don't have it all together. Amen. We all don't have it all together. Come on. We worship him because of what he gave. We worship him because of his life. And let me tell you, when you can get that perspective, you'll worship differently for the rest of your life. Yes. There will never, now I'm going to tell you, I walk in the church house and I'm like, yes, every time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm just like, all right, I've made it here. <laughs> Thank God I got here by the skin of my teeth. But I tell you what, you worship him by faith. Yes. I don't know why I feel like I need to press on this this morning, yes. but worship him by faith. And when you worship him by faith, he'll become that in your life. Praise God. God, I thank you that you are my provider because you provided that on Calvary. I thank you, Lord, that you are my righteousness because you provided that on Calvary. Yes. I, no, I'm not righteous based on my own merit. That's right. I'm righteous based on the blood of the Lamb. Yes. I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's okay. Because I'm telling you, I feel like if we were at a football game, Pastor that's Matt, right. there'd be a whole nother atmosphere. Come on. Come on, we would be dressing in all the colors. Some of us would have face paint. Oh, come on. Right? We'd have the whole family taking pictures. Oh, yeah. Like, come look on. where we're at. Yeah. But yeah, we can come into the church house, and I'm not, look, I'm not condemning anyone. He said, don't, I didn't come into the, to condemn the world. I came to save the world through him. But I'm telling you this morning, there's something that happens in worship if you can get a yes. hold of it that God wants to do in your life. Amen. That's it. And I'm telling you, last night we worshiped till 10 o'clock at night. It was a long haul, y'all. It was. I am pregnant. I got a baby. I'm tired. We drove four hours, right? But, but I, you know what I did? I pressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I pressed. Yeah. I pressed because there was something that God wanted to do in my heart, and I didn't want to leave until He did it. Praise and God. And you know what? Sometimes we don't even know what He did. That's right. Yeah. Oh, that takes faith, y'all. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Sometimes I don't even feel That's right. the Lord. That's right. That's right. But I gotta believe. Oh God, You're moving. Yeah. yeah. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes we come into church and you'll see old Chesney over here going after the Lord. And you're like, I don't feel like that. Mm. And then the enemy comes in and is like, well, you might as well just leave. Mm. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And God is saying, no, I got something for you. That's you got to come get it. That's come it. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You got to come get it. Yeah. You got to come get it. Don't, don't stop till you get it. Jacob wrestled with God and he said, I'm not going to let you go until you want bless me. I ain't leaving this house until you bless me. I'm not leaving this prayer meeting. Oh, Lord, we can barely get to prayer meetings. Pass them back. Until you bless me. I'm going to strap myself in this car and pray to the Lord until you bless me. Why? Because he gave. Y'all like my beautiful illustration. Yes. Okay, I'm going to get to it. Maybe. All right. Let's read the scripture. John 13, 16 says, For God so loved the what? The world. 360. Three, I said that, right? 360. Oh, 360. 360. What I said? Excuse me. 360. For God so loved the world that he gave. He what? Yeah, he yeah, gave. Yeah. What did he do? He yeah. gave. He keeps on giving, okay? Yeah. His only begotten son. Yeah. That what, whosoever. Mm. He doesn't cut anybody out of the deal. Whosoever, what, believes in him. Believes in him. Trust your whole spiritual well-being into the hands of the master. And it's not just a one-time deal. Amen. Yeah, you can you get saved one time. But I got it every day. God, I am entrusting my whole spiritual well-being into the hands of the master. I am entrusting my children into the hands of the master. I am entrusting my job, my finances, my marriage, my health, my heart. My mind into what? The hands of the master. I am continuing to believe. It 
not just, I give my heart to the Lord, I'm saved, and now that's it. We have to continue to what? Believe. That's it. That's it. Why? Because who believes in him should not perish. You know, as Christians, we can begin to perish. Come on. We can begin to be, we can be bound yes. as Christians. Yes. We can walk in defeat. That's right. When Jesus said he gave victory. Come on. Now, some of that's a process. Time after time, surrender after surrender, belief after belief, believing him, surrendering to him, trusting him over and over and over again. It's called a relationship. Amen. <clears throat> it's called a relationship for a reason. But have what everlasting life? John 3, 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Let me say this. When you get saved, the verdict over your life now is not guilty. Amen. Condemnation is a legal <clears throat> verdict of guilt. That's right. It is deemed for punishment. And it's a sentence for punishment. God sent his son to pay your debt. Yes. That you would be right before him. <coughs> hear me. That he didn't come to declare guilt over your life. And some of us are walking around in the shame and in the guilt of our mistakes. Come on. The shame and the guilt of our frailties. The sh Listen, I don't care how long you live for the Lord. He's always working on you. That's right. We always going to have a shortcoming. Because he's constantly, there's areas of our flesh. And when, he, when, we think, when you think he's done with one area, there's going to be another area that pops up. That's right. I continue to think about that game at the carnival, the whack-a-mole game. You know what I'm talking about? And you hit one and the other one pops up. And I just, I don't know why, but that, that's the picture I get when I think about the flesh. Come because on. the Lord said to mortify the deeds of the flesh. Right. That means put them to death. Yes. That means you, child of God, believer, we've got something to do. Come on. And that, as that thing pops up, we are to declare it dead before the Lord. I am dead. To that thing. Yes. But sometimes we don't do that. Right, right. And all them heads of the whack a moles are just fine. We just aren't, we're not fighting. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's you, got, you hear what I'm saying? We're not fighting the fight of faith. God has given us the tools and faith to believe, and He's given us and continues to give us them every single day. But you gotta pick up what is it like a hammer or something, yeah. and, and you gotta you gotta whack them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta declare that those things are dead. Yes. That that anxiety, I am dead to that yes. thing. Yeah. I am yeah. dead yeah. to that thing. That that disagreement that keeps popping up in your marriage, I am dead to that Amen. thing. Okay, that, that that thing that nobody else knows about. Come on, I am dead to that thing. Why? Because Jesus died, and I'm in Him, okay. and because I am now in Him, I am now what dead yes. with Him, and I am now buried with Him, and I'm. Wait, y'all getting this? Amen. With him in newness of life. Come on. You got to know what you have. Amen. And listen, some of us know what we have, but we forget what we have. Come on. You hear what I'm saying? Don't let's not get complacent. That's right. In the things of God. So John wrote this gospel. Well, let me say this. He didn't come to condemn the world, but the world what through him might be saved. Let me say this. Through is a channel. Yes. A deeper part of the river. I know you love words, Pastor Matt, and so do I. But the deeper part of the river that brings two streams together. Jesus brought us, by what he did on Calvary, brought us together with Christ. Yes. The deeper part of the river. That's right. And he's continuing to bring us together with the things that he accomplished on Calvary. Yeah. 
and make it a reality. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Because you get all these things the moment you get yes. saved. You have them. But we don't, they're, they don't become reality in our life until we begin to live it out. Amen. Begin to walk it out. And what I love about the book of John is John was the disciple whom Jesus loved. God so loved the world that he gave. And one thing that John had a great perspective on was the love of God. Now listen, there are churches that preach on the love of God and the love is a grace that gives you a license to sin. Well, that's not grace, y'all. Come on. God's, God's love does cover. God's love does give power. Yeah. God's love expects you to walk holy before him. Amen. Amen. They go hand in hand. God's love and God's holiness work together. God does love. And John had a great picture of God's love. He laid his head upon the breast of Jesus. And that's, God, give us that perspective. God, let us be so close to you that we have that perspective. That you loved me so much. God, make it fresh to me. Make it new to me what you gave. You bankrupt heaven to give all of these things to me. Make that new every day of my life. Give me a refresher every day of my life. Help me to see your love in a fresh way. Amen. You know, my husband was playing up here the other day. And you know, every relationship has its ups and downs. And every relate friendships, um, boss and, and, and worker relations, all kinds of relations have to have their stuff, right? <clears throat> but God give us a fresh perspective. And when I was watching him worship, the Lord reminded me, I gave him to you as an expression of my love. That's what the Lord said to me about my husband. And it reminded me, and it brought me back to why he brought us together. Because sometimes things can happen, even in our relationship with the Lord, and we need a fresh touch. We need him to remind us what he gave. Amen. You get what I'm saying? Yes. We need him to remind us what he gave, gave us in him. And John had this perspective, because I'll tell you this, John was a hothead. He was. He was the. He was named the son of thunder. Yes. He had a abrupt mouth, sharp tongue. He <coughs> cut, he cut cut you down. Okay, but God seen something in John that he was going to change, That's right. and that he was going to use John for the kingdom and for the glory of God. Listen, God is going to use us despite us. Yes. But we have to be hungry yes. for change. Yes. Amen. Can I say that again? Yes. God will use you despite you, which is a beautiful thing. <laughs> Yes. Which is a beautiful thing because yeah. you know what? Sometimes we feel inadequate and unqualified. Well, we are. Yes. You are. Amen. But God said, I'm going to qualify you That's it. Yeah. by the blood of Jesus. I'm going to give you everything you need if you continue to surrender and change for my kingdom and for my glory. Because look, a lot of us, we see all those. Anybody ever see their frailties and weaknesses and be like, I'm done? Mm. Yeah. God can't use me. What does God even want to do with me? I can't, I can't even get this thing out of my mind. Mm. I can't even overcome this thing. Mm. I keep getting into the same situation. Right, right. This, cir this circumstance keeps coming up. But God, God is allowing it so he can deal with it. Well, I should be ahead of that now. You ever meet, have lived for the Lord a long time and you, you're like, man, that thing is still there. I'm still dealing with that thing. It has been 18 years. Well, God probably is just still working on you. Yeah. And that's a good thing. When you don't sense the Holy Spirit working on you, then you should. there should be a red flag that there's a problem. 
When you find yourself in bondage, that's a red flag. I need to get back to the master. Because he gave his life for me so I could be free of this thing. Come on. There's got to be something. I got to get to his feet. And the, the theme of the book of John was behold your God. So a lot of the time, behold, look, look at your God. A lot of the times we're doing what? I'm looking at Michael. Or I'm looking at John. Or I'm looking at the pastor. Or I'm looking at the worship team. They didn't sing my song today. They didn't hit the right key. They didn't hit the right bass line. They didn't, they, who cares? Can I say that? Who cares? Pastor Matt quoted that scripture wrong. He said that like that. He was too harsh. Well, I love what my dad said yesterday. My dad said yesterday, he said, he said something, something about ser serving Jesus and that if, if Pastor Matt says things in a hard way, Jesus was flipping tables, y'all. And he was saying, you brood of vipers. He was calling Peter. He said, get out of here. The devil is behind you. Yeah. Like, come yes. on. Yes. yes. Jesus was, I mean, he was loving, but he spoke truth. That's come it. On. And yes. truth is to cut. Yes. Because why? If you have cancer... Come on. You need it cut out of That's you. That's right. That's right. Can I say that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sin is a cancer that you need cut out of you. Hallelujah. And the word of God will, will cut that out of you. Amen. And look, don't look at the messenger. Look at the message. That's Amen. it. Look at the message. Yeah, yeah. God, what are you saying to me? And listen, if we're always looking at the messenger or looking at the people, then you need to look in the mirror. Come on. Yeah. I need to look in the mirror. That's right. Because right. God, you're trying to do something in my heart and I'm missing it. Mm. And that's why I'm always frustrated that's when so I come good. to church. Oh, man. Mm. I don't even want to go to church. Mm. Pastor Matt don't preach like I want him to. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Well, if God wanted you up here, he put you up there. That's right. That's right. Amen. But listen to the message. Yeah. Because it's the truth of God's word. And that's not just for this church. That's, that's for right. any church. That's right. That's, that's for right. anywhere you go. Any worship team you listen to. Any, anything. Discern the spirit. That's sit it. Sit yourself under truth and gospel teaching and preaching. That's right. And then let God do a work in your heart. Praise because God. you ain't always going to be satisfied yeah, or yeah. feel good about that's where right. God has you. Right. You want to know why? Because he's getting the cancer out of you. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'll tell you what. Preach. Me and Mary and my husband are moving to Mississippi. I don't know how I got from New Jersey to Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> Meridian, Mississippi. But God is... I'm, t I'm telling you, if I could put a picture of the thing, y'all didn't even want to see it, but do the things that yeah, God yeah. is doing in my heart and the crushing, and, the, and the, you get what I'm saying? Like, God is doing something, and it don't always feel good. That's right, that's right. If you run into something, you're looking for something to make you feel good, the gospel doesn't always make you feel that's good. That's right, that's right. But when you remind yourself of what God gave, that's when the joy of the Lord could be your strength. Hallelujah. Not the joy of your job or the joy of your spouse or the joy of your children or the joy of where he has you or the joy of your position or the joy. No, it's the joy of the Lord. And when it says that in Nehemiah, it says it in all caps. Meaning he's a covenant-keeping God. That means remind yourself of his covenant yeah, work, yeah. what he did for you, and that will bring you true joy. Yes. You hear what I'm saying this morning? There's something that Lord, the Lord wants to do this morning in us that I think God, that John had a grip on when he was walking with Jesus. Hallelujah. God so loved, he gave. That word gave is a verb. That means to bring forth. He's going to bring it forth in your life. Yeah. But don't quit before it's done. How many of them, look, Peter said, Jesus, you have the words of life. That's it. Where am I to go? Listen, honestly, where are you going to go? <laughs> I'm <laughs> I mean, I gave my testimony a little bit last night, and it's so true. Yeah. I was sitting in a jail cell, and I was in an orange jumpsuit, mm. bound in shackles, mm. and, and Mike Cressman came in, and he said, 
give Jesus a chance, and if he doesn't do what he said, what he what he said right. he would do in his word for you, then you could come back here. <laughs> sin and some things that I like feel like it's very hard to swallow these respectable men of God who have have these huge ministries who have fallen or things have come up in sexual sin but you know what God so loved he gave Amen. them too yeah. you get what I'm saying whatever, whatever the restoration process is for them fine so be it and I'm not saying what they did was right please yes. and I'm not justifying it by any means but I am saying that Paul was a murderer. Come on. I am saying that David was um, an adulterer and a murderer. I am saying Moses was a murderer. Yeah. I am saying Rahab was a prostitute. Really? Okay. I am saying that these these men and women of God that were men after God's own heart had frailties and weaknesses the same as you and I. But God so loved, He gave. Yes. He gave for you and I, and He gave for them as well. Amen. The enemy is to get us to believe that we don't have what God has given us. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And that will drive you back. Come on. If I didn't know what I had in Christ, God could never keep me. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Y'all yeah. met Pastor Larson right a couple weeks ago. He was here. I'll never forget when he came up to me and he said, Angela, if you don't grab a hold, I'll never forget it because it changed my life. He said, if you don't grab a hold of what Jesus did for you, you're going to go back. Because mm. I was in a program and I stayed there for five years. And, and that program was on the backside of a mountain, away from everything I ever had done or seen or been around. I had no cell phone. 
Okay? I had no access to anything at all. And God was changing me there yeah. on that back side of the mountain. He was. He filled me with the Holy Spirit. He healed me of hepatitis C. He did all yes, these things yes, for me. Yes. He was doing all these things. And, but you know what? There, I was living in a miserable Christianity experience because I didn't understand what Jesus had done for me. Mm. So I hate to say this. He was keeping me in the way he could with boundaries and restrictions and things the way he did. But I tell you what, when I, when I left and I moved to Louisiana, now it was time for me and the Holy Spirit to get real. Does that make sense? Yeah. You, like it was, it was, it was a showtime. <laughs> like it was, it was showtime for for God to either for my relationship with God to re be real and exercise this real, or I was going to go back. Mm. And I had to get a hold of His truth. That's it. And that's your job. Come on. Look, it's nobody else's job for you to get the truth. That's it. Come on. Open your Bible. Come yeah. On. Yeah. Praise God. You know, I feel like America, we're so spoiled. Come on. We are. We got, you got Bibles everywhere. Yeah. There's Bibles in a hotel room. There's Bibles in, in the dollar store. No, really. People are dying for Bibles in other countries. Yeah. Can't even get them. And we got them in the dollar general. Yeah. And we just take it for granted. That's right. Yeah, we do. Help us, Lord. No, we do. Help us. Help us. I sometimes I slide my Bible down the side of my bed, and you know, and then I'm just like, I, I don't know, it's probably just me, but I'm like, I don't even know, that's not a place for this. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like, this the word of God, the truth of God's word, the truth shall set you free. Yes, yes. the truth. How do you know? Wait, so then, what if I don't know the truth? Can you just trust everything me and Pastor Matt say or whoever you're listening to? But I'm telling you what, you better get get it for yourself. Because if one day, some God forbid, something happens and the church house is shut down, you better have some weapons. You better be loaded up. You better be ready. Because the Lord, it says that things are going to wax worse and worse. Do we believe that or not? Yeah, yeah. Things are going to get worse and worse. And what do we need? God so loved, he gave. He transferred possession of something to someone. Wait, hear what I said. Gave, transferred possession of something to someone. By the cross of Jesus Christ, he bankrupt heaven and transferred ownership. Hallelujah. Ownership. You own and possess all that Jesus died for. Yes. He gave. Yeah. He possessed it and he gave yes. it. You get what I'm saying? He said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Yes. I don't just give any Joe Schmo the keys to my house. That's right. Like not everybody just walks up in my home. That's right. People that I know. Mm, come on. Amen. Jesus transferred. When you give our heart to the Lord, now what he possesses now is your possession. Yes. You own it. It's yours. Hallelujah. Praise God. No, that's good. No, that's Hallelujah. really good. You have his name. Yes. You can use it. Yeah, yeah. Like, you ever meet somebody that's, if I said my last name was Trump, <laughs> Y'all would know who that was, right? <laughs> a lot of people know Robert in the community. If I ever say Robert's name, people know. I mean, I met somebody in Mississippi that was from around here, and I said, do you know Robert Fernandez? They're like, oh, yeah, we know Rob. <laughs> <laughs> the mayor, Rob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> but I, I say that for a reason. Because you can use Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Because you've been adopted by the master. Yeah. So now you can use his name for his kingdom and his glory. And his possessions, if you walked in, you could say, yes, the name of Jesus gives me peace. Yeah. Amen. Why? Because he possessed it, now he gave it. He transferred ownership. Yeah. It's yours. Yeah. But the devil is trying to wreak havoc and get you to believe that what God gave is his possession to you isn't for you. Mm. But it is. That's right. It is for you. That's it. 
But what do we need to do? I'm going to run through this real quickly. Gee, we need to be born again. Praise That's God. It. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Nicodemus, one of the most prominent leaders of that time, but one of the most rich leaders of that time. He was a Pharisee, meaning one of the separate ones. He, he was a man of all of the law. He had, was in high esteem. He was prominent, okay? He was a member of the highest court of justice, the Supreme Council, the member of the Sanhedrin. So he was like the creep of the crop. Mm. Even he was like, what is it about this Jesus? What is it? Something drew him. Something drew him. And I know something's drawing you. Yeah. And something's drawing me. And when he shows up to Jesus and they have a conversation by night, yeah. he says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles except thou does, and except God be with him. He recognized that the Spirit of God was upon Jesus. Right. I don't think he really understood who he was, but he understood that what that God was using him. Right. And what Jesus said, he said, Jesus answered and said, this is John 3, 3, Verily, verily, I don't know if y'all ever knew this, but I want you to know this. Anytime you see something twice in the Word of God or three times in his imperative statement, yeah. he is saying, this is important. Listen up. Have you ever had your mom or dad say your name? Right. Matt. And Matt's not listening? Matt. Matt's not listening. What's your middle name? James. Matthew James Abair. Okay. <laughs> now? Yeah. Yes. Well, that's what Jesus is doing here. He's saying, Verily, verily, listen up. This is important. I need you to get this. Except you be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You need to be born again. Look up here. God so loved, he gave what? Salvation. That's the heading. The born again experience. What's the first thing we need to do? You need to get saved. That's it. Amen. You need to get saved. You need to give your heart to the Lord. We need to repent. Okay, some of us might be Christian 101, but some of us might need to hear this this morning. Some of us have been sitting in church a really long time, and we could not be saved. Mm. We just go through the motions. That's right. Mm. We need to be born again, born of the Spirit. And he says what? He said to see, to know, to be aware of, to understand, to discover the mysteries of God. I need to... I need to be born again to see God, yes. to see him move, to, for him to be real in my life, for what he gave to be realistic to me, to recognize when it's him and recognize when it's not. You need to be born again. That's right. That's right. You need the spirit of God in you. You need that lie detector in you. That's good. You need to know when it's alive. I you. <laughs> I use this often when I come here, but it's so true. That 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 really bad show, Maury, when it said when he said the baby is not you are not the father. You know what I'm talking about. I used to watch that before I was saved. But the Holy Spirit will tell you, yeah, that is not your father. Come on, come on. Speaking. Come on. That is not y'all. Y'all gonna remember yes. that now. Yes. That is not your father. Mm, that's so the good. lie deter detector turns. Come on. That is a lie. That's it. That is not your daddy. Mm. <laughs> that is not your father. That's right. And if he is a father, you'll know through the power of the Holy Spirit when you are born again who is speaking to you when you sit yourself under truth. That's Come right. On. That's right. When you read the word of God, it says the Holy Spirit will bring things back to your remembrance of what the truth of the word of God is. Yes. So some of us, we sit and we say, I don't know what God's voice sounds like. And that's okay. But then did we open our Bible? Come on. Can I say that? Yes. No, really. I mean, sometimes I'm like, do, 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 do. <laughs> like open the Bible. Yes. And guess what? 
So I'll tell you what, Mrs. G, not his mama. She taught me one thing that I'll, I'll say forever. She said, read the word of God. And if you don't get it, keep reading. <laughs> That's right. Some of me, me and my husband were reading something the other day. And it was like the longest genealogy ever. Everybody's names, you know what I'm talking about? I think we started making up names because it just started being like out of control names, okay? So go through it. Just keep on reading. Get to the keep on reading. Keep on reading. And then all of a sudden, something's going to be like, yes. yeah, yeah. It's going to light up to you. Yeah. <clears throat> it's going to light up. And you're going to be like, whoa. And then you're going to read something like this. God so love he gave. And it's going to be like, whoa. And you're going to keep, it's going to, God, the Holy Spirit is going to keep making things new to you. And keep open. The word of God is living. Yes. Yes. I heard somebody say the other day, I heard this before. I heard, you hear that a lot, Pastor Matt. I've heard, I've heard this, it's okay, she'll go. <laughs> I've heard this before. Yeah, but you know what? God wants to hear us to hear it again yeah. and again yeah. and again and again. Why? Because it can be new and it can be applied to different areas of your life again and again and again. And we can mature. And grow, that's the point of this, is to mature and grow in the things of God again and again and again. But what do we need to do to know who's speaking to us? <clears throat> Get in the word of God. Hear what God is yes, saying to yes, us. Yes. He said, you must be what? Born yes. again in order to receive what I have for you. Something that is freely transferred is salvation. It wasn't free for Jesus. But it's free for you and I. Amen. It's free. You don't got to pay for it. You don't got to tie for it, which you should tie. Yeah. You don't got to read your Bible every day for it, which you should read your Bible. You don't even got to worship for it. You should worship, though. Why? Because he gave. You don't do those things to get salvation. Come on. You do those things because you are born again. Yes. And why? Because I want to see God. I give my tithes to bless the church so I can see God move in my finances. That's right. Come on. I'll tell you what. Let me tell you something about finances. They are from the devil. <laughs> <laughs> but God can use them. And I'll tell you what. Things are hard. My husband and I, we got five kids. You know, we're doing the best that we can. But I'll tell you one thing we don't skip on. And this isn't about money, okay? Y'all just hear me out. We don't skip on our ties. And we have seen God bless us. Yes. Praise God. And I'm not, I'm not saying, look, I, I would love for the Lord to just like rain down like 20 grand. You know what I mean? Like there's just a check in my mailbox like Angela Bulls, $20,000. If anybody's feeling that in their spirit this morning. But... <laughs> But what I'm saying is, is he'll provide yes. the clients yes. for me. He'll yes. provide yes. the people for yes. my husband and what my husband does. And guess what? That's hard work, y'all. Yeah. It's hard work. I got to get up every day and I got to go to work. Get up and go to work. Come on. Get up and do what God has told you to do. And he will reap things in your life. Sow where he told you to sow and let him reap that in your life. And he, guess what? It might not be right away. Like there's days I'm like, Lord, yeah, give my husband a great client. Give him someone. This is going to bless us. And sometimes that takes three, four, five months. You get what I'm saying? But I don't quit. I, but I do it. Why? Because I'm saved. And because I want to see God move. And because I believe what the Bible says. Amen. And because I don't want holes in my pockets. Come on. The Bible says you don't tie, you got holes in your Come pockets. Come on. Yeah. He's gonna get I'm serious. That's, right. I'm, that's, a lot, that's sobering to me. You ever have a hole in your purse or your pocket and you lose stuff in it? <laughs> and then you're like, what? Where's that 20? <laughs> gas money? And it's gone. Well, that's what the Bible says. Anyway, that's my little tidbit. That's good for you. You like that. <laughs> God so loved, he freely transferred what? I'm going to go through this, hit this real quick. So God did, look at my beautiful illustration. God so loved the world that he gave and paid the sin debt for the penalty of your sin. 
What's the penalty of my sin? Yeah. Death, hell, the grave. And what did he do? He canceled. Yeah. Ooh, there's wires here. If I were to come to you and say your debt is canceled, come on. Listen, I'll think I'll get this. <laughs> if somebody would walk up to me and give me a phone call and say, Angela Balls, I seen all your debt and it is gone. <laughs> what? I would be like, yeah, boy. Yes, Jeff. I would be so. Come on. <laughs> come on, sis. No, come on. Yeah, yeah. Your car is paid. Your house is paid. Your credit card debt is paid. Your student loans are paid. Your children's wedding funds are paid. Everything is paid. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. We all be running around this church. Yeah, come on. <laughs> No, we would. Your sin debt has been paid. Hallelujah. I walk by what? I'm justified by what faith? Hey. I have what peace with who? 
God. Yes. Yes. You got access to the things of God. He's given you the keys to his house. Yes. You can take and possess yes. what Jesus has in his home. Look, when I was an addict, I would steal mm. Mm. and take don't say mm -hmm, like y'all already know wrong. <laughs> Just because I'm putting myself out there. <laughs> Look in your own backyard. <laughs> but I would take things that weren't mine. Right, right. And I would possess them and go sell them mm -hmm. as they were mine. Mm. Well, that's what the enemy tries to do. He comes up into your home. That's right. Yeah. That's right. He takes yes. what Jesus has given you, mm. and he goes and tries to take it, take it and steal it from you yeah. as his own. Mm. The devil ain't got no legal right. Come That's on. right. That's right. That's right. Can I say that again? That's Preach. probably like bad English, Preach but God, the do devil it. don't have any right to legally take. That's right. What Jesus possessed on the cross right. and gave you Come on. is your house yes. covered by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. But guess what you need to do? Mm. Protect it. Yeah. yeah. Possess it as your own. We got all the stuff in the house. That's right. But we're not possessing it as ours. Protect it. And we allow it. retreat back yes. to our old nature. Mm. 
And we can do that in the Lord too. Yes. We can retreat. Mm. We can go back. We can succumb to the lies and tactics of the enemy if we don't allow the Spirit of God to keep us. That's it. By the grace of God, we stand. How do I stand? By knowing I'm positioned in Christ. See, one of the things is you're going to fall. So when I fall, I need to know where to go. That's and right. when I know where to go, I need to know who I am. That's and right. when I know who I am, now I do what I stand. That's because so the enemy has no power over me yes. now. Because when he says you're guilty and you're still the same, one of the tactics of the enemy was to get me to believe I was still the same person I was when I got saved. And I'll never forget Naya's mama coming up to me and saying, you are a new creation. Amen. She pointed that little finger. And she said, all things have passed away. Behold, yes. all yes. things have become new. Yes. She would tell me over and over again until I got it. I was new. Yes. Yes. And I didn't have to go back oh, to the yes. old things. Hallelujah. All things have passed away. Amen. That means they dead. Yes. Dead. Dead. Yes. Don't they used to attach for a punishment back in the Old Testament a dead body right, right. to the leg of the person. And the dead body would begin to decay the person because mm. the dead body was decayed. Yeah, it's you got to cut that thing off. No more. <laughs> it's dead. I don't want nothing to do with that anymore. Come on. I don't want anything to do with that old nature anymore. I don't want anything. Look, there's things in my in my life now that the Lord is like, that's not the way you should handle that. Right. That needs to be dead. Right. Come on. Right. That attitude you got, Angela, towards people, that needs to be dead. That right. self righteousness needs that's to be right. dead. That pride, that needs to God, be dead. Yes, yes. That 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 argumentative thing you that needs to be dead. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Look, we can clean up real nice. No more drugs, no more pornography, no more love. What about your heart? Come on. Yes. You preach it now. What about our heart? Yes. Not really. Because yeah. that's where the decay starts to become. And that's where we, it starts to get real ugly. Look, you, I always, I told my kids this. I said, look, you can dress up real nice out here. I said, but if you open up your mouth and it comes out with something nasty, you just look as ugly as what just came out your Come mouth. On. Come on. Come on. Come on. God wants to get up in here. Yeah. Yes. Jesus said when he was looking for David, he said, I don't look at the outward appearance. Yeah. I, I'm looking at the heart. <laughs> he's a heart working God. Oh, he's yeah, he's yeah. all about the heart. He's not looking at the outward appearance. I'm not saying don't, you know, do your makeup and, and do all that good stuff. Take care of yourself. Please do. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is, is if you do all this and you ain't letting him work here, when you open up your mouth, we're going to know who you are. Mm. Wow. I will know about somebody in the first three to five minutes of a conversation. Because it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Ooh, Jesus, help us with our tongue. Help us with what we say. Look, you know when somebody comes to you and starts talking about somebody else. You know where their heart is. You get what I'm saying? You know when somebody comes murmuring and complaining. Oh here, look! I like it. Oh here she comes again. <laughs> Ain't nobody like a murmuring, complaining spirit. Mm. Negative Nancy. Mm. Negative, 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 mm. negative, negative. Mm. You better start looking and beholding your God. Yes. And seeing what He did for you, because yes. God has something for all of us. And let me tell you this: that's that that's that sanctification process. That's that process of sanctification. Let, let me go here real quick. So we need to know what? We need to know that Jesus gave and paid the penalty for our sin. I have a position in him. I am justified. I am what? Legally declared innocent. But then I need to know something else. He not only paid the penalty, but he broke what? The power. Yeah. He broke the power of sin now over your life. So now when you open, when I open up your mouth and say something about sister so-and-so, the Holy Spirit about to cleave your tongue to the roof of your mouth. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because he broke the power of sin over your life. That's right. When you are in a dark place and you want to commit suicide, I know how the enemy works. Right. Guess what? 
the Holy Spirit going to show up yes. and say he yes. broke the power of yes. sin yes. over your life yes. and suicide yes. is not an option. Yes. Praise God. You hear what I'm saying to you? Suicide is not an option. Because you need to do what? Behold your God. Behold what he has done for you. He has broken the power of sin. He has sanctified you. The moment you got saved, glory to God, you are holy and you are righteous. His instant sanctification, instant cleaning. Praise God. Instantly. But then you say, well, why am I dealing with all this? Because there's a progressive work That's right. that God needs to do in our lives. And guess what we need to do? We need to work with him. We need to allow him to work. Romans 6, 6 said, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. Yes. And henceforth we should not serve. As serve means be a slave. That's right. To sin any longer. Wait, hold up. No, you need to know that. You need to know I am crucified. I am dead to sin. I don't need to be a slave to that negative mindset anymore. Amen. I don't need to be a slave to poverty anymore. Hallelujah. I don't need to be a slave to lust Hallelujah. anymore. I don't need to be a slave to gossip. I don't need to be a slave to unforgiveness. Mm. Forgive them. For your Father in Heaven will not forgive you unless you forgive them. Come on, sister. That's a scary thought process. Because if I walk out this door and I have unforgiveness in my heart, what will happen if something happens to me? Mm. He said he won't forgive you. Mm. That's I don't know, That's Pastor Matt. That's the truth. I don't know how to take that. Okay, I know that in a moment of salvation, I am saved. But you better forgive them. Yeah. Come on. But it's hard. But it's hard to forgive them. I know. But you are crucified with Christ, yeah. and Amen. you don't need to be a slave to unforgiveness anymore. Right. Forgive right. your spouse. Forgive your children. Forgive your boss. Forgive whoever it is, that best friend that did you wrong, that job that did you wrong, that person that did you wrong, whatever it is, forgive them. Yes. That's right. It's only going to keep you in bondage. Right. It's only going to keep you a slave mm. to replaying the tape Come on. over and over and over again. And God's saying, I'm trying to sanctify you. I'm trying to set you free. I'm trying to make you whole. I'm trying to make you complete. Give it to me. Know this, that you are dead and that the body of sin is destroyed. Hear me. It ceased. It's done away with. It has no power over you. Whatever that thing is has no power over you. Well, why do I feel what I feel when it happens? Because we can't be based on our emotions. You hear what I'm saying? Every time that thing pops up, there's going to be emotion that goes along with it. And the emotion lies. Come on. So now we're led by our emotions instead of being led by the spirit. Mm. That's and the spirit of God says, guess what? The power of sin is now destroyed. It's now vanquished. It has no power over you. And you are no longer a slave to it. Yes. Hallelujah. You're no longer a slave. You're free. That is what Jesus gave to you. Praise God. That is what Jesus did for you. He is continuing to sanctify you. Let me read this. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace you are saved through what? Faith. Stop thinking it's based on what you do. We're so works oriented. No, really though. Even if I do it now, still Pastor Matt. Even if I mess up or something happens, I go immediately to works. Because we're works oriented people. And I have to remind myself I'm saved through faith. Not of works. Lest any man should what? Boast. Very good. So I have what? I have the penalty and power of sin broken over my life. I'm justified. I'm being sanctified. That's my condition. And one day, the presence of sin will be done away with. Praise God. I don't know about you, but that makes me happy. One day, I'm going to be glorified. I'm going to be in a glorified body. Look, I'm a person 
personal trainer and I help people get well for a living and get fit for a living, but one day I, I'm going to be out of a job <laughs> and I'm be excited about it. <laughs> personal training ain't for the week. I just want y'all to know. But one day I'm going to have a glorified body. You're going to have a glorified body. And the presence of sin that bothered us for so long, that wreaked havoc for so long, is going to be done away with. We need to know what Jesus gave. So listen, when we know what Jesus gave us, so in order to receive these things, what he gave as a possession to us, we need to what? Be born again. We know we're justified legally right in right standing position with God, and we have what? Peace with God based on our what? Justification. That's our position. Hold your position. In, in a war, they tell those in the army, to what? Hold your position. Don't let the enemy take you out. Hold, child of God, hold your position. Well, in that position, your condition might be shaking in your boots. Mm. You hear what I'm saying? You might be going through all kinds of stuff in your mind and your heart as you see the enemy coming and, and being on your heels. But what do we need to remember? Nope, my father gave. Gave what? Gave the Holy Spirit. So now you have the Holy Spirit in you. The one who called going aside to help. John 14, 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in what? My name. Whose name do we got? His name. And he shall teach you all things to come, bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I say to you. So what do we receive? What did he give? The Holy Spirit. John 14, 27 says this. He gives peace. Come on. How many times do you say, how do I get peace? How do I don't have peace. Do you, and nobody, I'm the only person that feels like that at times. I don't have peace. I need peace. Where can I find peace? Especially when I was not saved. That's why I was doing most of those drugs. Is to find peace. John 14, John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, I give unto you. Let your heart not be troubled. Let it not be stirred or agitated. Anybody ever stirred or agitated? Mm -hmm. Or is that just me? <laughs> Neither let it be afraid. Don't be frightened, fearful, or have anxiety. Anybody in here? Anybody ever feel that way? Yeah. Okay. I'm just seeing if we're alive and real. Okay. But he said, I give you peace. It's an action performed by the Holy Spirit to give you quietness and rest. Yes. That means that you could sit down in your position in Christ and you could take all the pressure off your nervous system because I am sitting yes. in him. Yes. Yes. Y'all need to sit down. In probably more ways than one. <laughs> we need to sit down and let the Lord quiet our hearts yes. and rest Amen. in what he gave us. Hallelujah. Amen. Stop trying to fix them. Yes. Stop trying to figure it out. Yes. Stop trying to get ahead, figure out the next move. Come on. Stop. Rest. Yes. In him, in your position. Knowing that your condition is changing and that he gives peace. Yes. He gives peace through who? The Holy Spirit. What else does he give? Healing. He heals the broken hearted. Uh-oh. Can I say that? Broken? That word broken means I, I, I am in pieces. Everybody, anybody ever feel like they're in pieces? And that also means to bring to birth. But if you ever gave birth to a baby, it is something to reckon with. <laughs> and you feel like you're in pieces. That word means to crush, to destroy, to be quenched of heart. Mm. Have you ever felt like that? Right, right. This thing has broken me so much, I feel quenched. He says, he bindeth, he firmly wrap up, he saddle and fasten, he stop. That which tries to rule over you. Mm. Your brokenness will try to rule over you. But it says that word bind means he stops it from ruling over you. That's right. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's right. He binds the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. Anything that causes you pain.
pain or sorrow, he brings healing to. We, Pastor Matt said this the other day, and by his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are healed. We are made whole. We are repaired. We are cured of our infirmity. Praise. But y'all need to know what? His possession, your possession. You have it. It's yours. Amen. For your body, for your heart, yes. for your peace. It says Luke 6, 19, the whole multitude sought to touch him. For they knew virtue went out of him. Miracle work and power goes out of him. And they, he healed them all. Yes. Not one was left. Oh, that's good stuff, y'all. That, that word healed means it was as though he, it never happened. Praise God. Sierra, what he's going to do in your life, yes. you're going to look back and people are going to look at you as though it never happened. Yes. Amen. Yes. yes. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. I'm telling you, when people look at me, and I'm, and I'm no glory for myself, when people look at me and I say, I was a heroin addict, I was in jail, I was, and they were like, Right, right. What? They, my clients that I train can't believe it. They're like, no way. And I said, it's all Jesus. Hallelujah. It's all Jesus I got my teeth, y'all. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My husband said that to me. He, <laughs> he said, Angela, how is it that you got all your teeth? Yeah. I said, baby. And, but he says he restores our youth. Yes. Hey. If you didn't get to keep your teeth, the Lord will help you. Because yes. <laughs> that has an effect, I tell you what. But God will restore. Yes. As though it never happened. But people are going to look, you're going to have had a problem, a drug addiction, a porn addiction. You're going to be probably one of the miserable people. You know, you ever meet somebody who's just miserable? Look, and then one day you're going to be the happiest person to ever be. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to be somebody that's so quiet, and one day God's going to give you a boldness as though in every way. It's going to be like, whoa, what happened to that person? Mm. We're going to have lived in poverty. Y'all, there was a time that I had a blow-up couch in my house. <laughs> when, I, when I got saved, I, Rob, I took the bus. I got me a microwave, strapped it onto one of those, um, you know them roller uh, luggages? Yeah. Yeah. I, I needed a microwave. I had no way to cook. I was freshly saved. I had no shame in my game either. I went and I strapped a microwave to a rolling suitcase and I got on that bus with pride. <laughs> I did. I didn't have no K cup machine. I had one of them old school coffee pots that, you know what I'm talking about? Them ones not, nobody wants to buy anymore because it's not fast enough. Okay? You know what I'm talking about? So I had one of those. I had a blow up couch. Okay? And I was living on a mattress that looked like it was from jail. Now, in jail, you got mattresses like this, like, like, rear. And, and it had a mark in it. Look, it had like, it was like a knife mark. And it was like, all, and I called my mom. I said, this is care be it. This care be what God has for me. <laughs> I feel like I'm still, but look, it was my first apartment ever. And God was allowing me yeah. to have faith. Mm, yeah. Even in the little. Yeah. Yes. Now I have a beautiful home. Amen. And God has blessed me with different things. So can I say that? That that there's a, there's a process yeah. Yeah. that God must look. I could have been stubborn, stiff-necked. I could have not been grateful for my blow-up couch. I was proud of that thing, y'all. I took pictures of it. I sent it to my mom. I was like, look what I got from the neighbor. I was grateful. I wasn't under the boardwalk with a needle in it.
blessing me. Mm. He'll test you. Oh, thank yeah. you. You gonna be grateful for that blow up couch, Angela? Jesus. You gonna be grateful for that microwave? Jesus. I gave you the money to pay for it yes. and the money to get on that bus and I gave you the straps Hallelujah. to put it on your luggage. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we take some things for granted. Oh, God. We take Hallelujah. some things for granted. And I look at where God brought me to now. I said, God, you gave me a business that has been thriving for the last nine years. Like I, my, the Lord built my personal training business from the ground up. And it was by faith from the ground up. And then I had to leave my business in Louisiana and go redo it yeah. in Meridian. Yeah. That took faith. Yes, yes. I had to leave this church, the comfort yes. and the love I felt here, and the community that I felt here, and I had to go trust him again. Jesus. I had to leave my position mm. and know that I was positioned yes. Yes. in him. I'm talking about some real, this is like real life Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. He will give you Jesus. deliverance. Yes. I'm going to run down these because we need to know. And I'm going to close. Jesus. Now, if you come up and just play the keys a little. Yes. Well, thank you. I want y'all to hear these scriptures, though. Stick with me. We almost there. I know y'all hungry. Jesus. Jesus. But we eating. Yes. I don't know. Yes. Come on. We're eating. <laughs> All right. What does he gave? What is our possession? What is ours? Luke 8.35 says this. Deliverance is yours. Yes. Then they went out to see what oh, look, they went out to see what, what was done. And came Jesus and found the man out of whom devils departed. That word departed means they're away. They proceeded away. Devils will tremble in the presence of God. Thank you, Jesus. And what was happening? Look, I want y'all to get this. The man was seated at the feet of Jesus. Look. He didn't get his deliverance and go do him. <laughs> That's so good. Hallelujah. Now y'all hear what I'm saying? We do that. I could have gotten my deliverance and been free from drugs and went and did me. I could have been like, well, I'm free. I can do me now. And there was a day the Lord came to me and said, okay, now the rubber meets the road. And I'm going to tell you today is your day. The rubber has and he's saying, are you going to follow me? Are you going to trust me even with the doctor's report? Yes. Are you going to trust me even if your finance situation ain't looking too great? I feel you. Yes. Are you going to trust me even if your position is gone? Even if your marriage is broken? Even if your children have walked away from the Lord? Are you going to trust me and sit at my feet still? Take your deliverance and use it for yourself. And he was sitting at the feet of Jesus. What was he? Clothed in his right mind. Yeah. Listen to what this means. Right mind means free from injury or disease. Have you been wounded in your mind? Has sin wreaked havoc in your mind? Because my Bible says that he's given you a sound mind yes. that is free from injury and disease. John 8, 36 says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, that means you have a legal right to walk in liberty and deliverance. You shall be free indeed. I am certainly not a slave any longer. What else does he give us? He gives us unity. Uh-oh. 2 Corinthians 13, 11, Finally, brethren, be perfect. Be fitly framed together. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind, one direction. Live in peace. Church, live in peace. Church, let not disagreement and frustrations and irritations come between you. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you.
with you. If y'all will stand with me. He gives you power. Isaiah 40, 29. He gives you power and overcoming force and ability to the faith. Do you feel fatigued or weary this morning? And to them he gives no might. Ability and power. He increases strength to those who have no might. And they shall not perish. They shall not be destroyed. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. That's what he's given you. That's what he's possessed. His possession is now your possession. I want to ask you this morning, do you need an increase? Do you need to be encouraged? Have you had this possession and not really accessed it? You've had all these things that God has given you, but we've been allowing the enemy to come in our house and take. Well, I want to leave this altar open as Naya begins to see if we need just a refreshing, a fresh touch for God to come and remind us of what is left.